Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan, and today we're going to look at Glen Morangy. Now, my wife and I have never had Glen Morangy, and uh, we hear several other uh, YouTube whiskey review channels talking about it. Um, so we picked up the, uh, this is the uh, La Santana, uh, which is a, a sherry cask 12-year. That'll be the next review. Uh, this review is the uh, Quinta Ruben uh, Port Cask, which is a 14-year-old um, whiskey. Now, these are Highland Scotches, and uh, keep in mind, these are only the 50-milliliter bottles, um, which, you know, is a great way to go if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want to try stuff. Highly recommend going out and looking for the 50 mil bottles. If you watch this channel, you'll know that I've done several 50 mil um, reviews. Um, you know, there's a, a minimized selection of bottles to choose from, but there's still enough out there that you can get an awful lot of things to check out. Uh, it might not be as much as what you would find on um you know the standard store shelves but there's plenty out there so uh we saw these and rather than spending i think it was like 65 or 75 dollars on up for a unknown bottle uh we elected to purchase these now these uh this bottle and then and the other one were uh three dollars 99 cents at mr liquor in rapid city south dakota um you know still fairly expensive for a um 50 mil bottle i've seen stuff you know seven eight nine dollars uh not this brand in particular but other brands i've seen go for that high uh compared to like this jameson cold brew uh which was 98 cents here locally um you know so the 50 mils can go all over the place but if you don't want to spend you know 50 60 70 80 90 100 dollars on a bottle and you're just looking to try something i highly recommend that you uh dabble with the 50 mils um so as i said this is a uh a port cask finish whiskey now finished whiskeys uh my wife and i have become really big fans of those both the port and the sherry cask finishes um they add something new and different to some of our favorite whiskeys um you know, 14 years old, that's pretty old. Uh, you know, that's kind of in there. That's kind of where I th I believe that uh, scotch starts to shine right around that 12-year mark. Having said... Uh, you would, wouldn't you? Having said that, I... Um, shoot. Where'd that go? Whatever. Um, I do like and am a fan of the McClellan's or McLeland's um, scotches. Uh, they're sourced, and uh, they're three years old on the average, but they're Highland, they're Lowland, and they're um, Islas. Man, I got a handle, so a 175 of um, Isla upstairs. That's kind of my daily drinker. It's three years old, and yeah, so it has a little bit of that young character to it um, as far as not being as smooth and rounded, but man, as far as flavor goes... You get your money's worth. I only paid thirty-eight bucks for a one seven five of that. So, you know, you're not. There's not a lot to complain about that. So, anyways, uh, the finished whiskeys we've become fans of. Uh, finished bourbons, finished ryes, um, finished scotches. Uh, you know, we really enjoy those, and so we figured, why not try? You know, dive into them and see what we can find on these Glen Morangies. Um, Highlands in particular. I, you know, granted, I think there's something like 70 distilleries and then the blends of all those and um, and then blended scotches and whatever else, blended single malts, blended scotch, or sorry, blended malts and blended scotches. I mean, there's a huge array of whiskey, of uh, scotch whiskey out there. However, um, Highlands, to me, tend to be more floral, extremely light in flavor, uh, and you get a lot more like pear and apricot notes. Um, not, I don't know, they're just not my thing. I And I have not tried anywhere near all the different varieties out there and stuff. I just really, my I, myself and my wife, have been really attracted to the peated scotches, the islas, 
um, Talisker from Sky, uh, some of the peated space sides. Uh, I also like just the regular non peated space sides that are, you know, they for some reason the space sides tend to have a really nice malt component, a really nice butterscotch to them. Um, so I have not drifted too far into the Highland scotches. Uh, I will say McClellan's, their Highland was really good, their Lowland was really good, and their Isla. Uh, if you go back, watch some of my videos, you'll see I've reviewed all three of those on this channel. So let's get into this one. It has a very heavy malt forward nose. It's mostly malt, a little bit of ethanol, and tucked in the back. Uh, a little bit of light fruit, like an apricot. Um, I didn't mention the ABV. Let's see what we got here, if I can even read this. The writing on this is so crappy. I think it says 45. Oh. 46, 45. I don't know. The print on this bottle is so small. I don't know what it is. You'll have to look it up. Uh, it's one of their main regular offerings, so it's easy to come by. Malt. That's really the name of the game here, though. Malt with a really nice light fruit in the background. It's pretty deep. It's a little bit of apricot. Kind of a light fruit in there. <clears throat> on the taste. Taste is kind of complex. There's a little bit of fruitiness up front, um, almost like a like a sparkling um, grape juice kind of a flavor without the sparkle, and then a little bit of barrel tannin, a uh, nice sweet middle, and almost like a nice coffee um, dark chocolate kind of finish. A little bit of barrel impact on it. Okay, quite nice. Um, for a port finish, it's not as sweet as I thought it would be, although there is a fair amount of sweet components to it. Go back in again. There's almost a tobacco in there. That malt, almost a, a leather, like a leather and a tobacco. Malt, a little bit of sweetness, and then that, like, Chocolate coffee finish, a little bit of barrel impact, a little tannin in there. Not a whole lot. It's interesting. Um, there's almost a little bit of a green note in the middle of that, too. It's not as port-esque as I would have imagined it to be. But very nice. Enough layers that you'd have to sit and pick it apart. The nose is not really changing at all for me, um, but the flavor profile is. Um, and I, I kind of like it. It's still not something that I'm reaching for if I have my choice. Um, it has a weird like density to start for the first half a second, and then it thins out, and then it gets more dense in the finish as well when that coffee chocolate note kind of comes in. Um, but uh, it might be a cigar whiskey, you know. It might be a good porch sitter. It's good. It's complex. It has a lot of different things going on it. There's, you know, that time I got a small uh, butterscotch in there. Um, but it's just not my. It's just not my thing. Um, it's good. I would enjoy it if somebody poured it for me. And I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, I will not be picking up a bottle of it, but it is it is nice. Uh, it does have a nice sweetness now. That butterscotch, maybe a little bit of vanilla or honey kind of coming out. Um, it just presents different, might be something that I have to be in the mood for. And that is, you know, saying that is after having that dickel and the um, blue corn uh, and then those Westland single malts. Uh, this is coming off the heels of those reviews. So that might have something to do with it. I might have to explore it again at a later date, but a really nice whiskey, just not necessarily what I'm reaching for. So $3.99 for a 50 milliliter bottle, 
at uh, Mr. Liquor in Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, 14-year-old Glenn Morangi, uh, the Quinta Rubin, a port finished. Make sure I did that one right. A port cask finish uh, Highland Scotch. There you go. Drop in the comments down below what your experience with uh, this particular uh, Glen Morangi, the port cast finish, is. Uh, also, what you can find a bottle for in your area. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about it. If you're a fan of it, let me know why. Uh, and if you're not a fan, also let me know why. Uh, I'm in the middle. I, I'm indifferent. I enjoyed it, but not as much as I enjoy my peated Isla. So, there you go. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check out Life and Whiskey on BitChute, Minds, and uh, YouTube. Hopefully someday on Rumble. And uh, there you go. Thanks for watching. You guys have yourselves a great day. I know that was a quick review. We'll do another quick review here right after this one. And um, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.